Good evening, folks. It's 5.30. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Agenda changes, additions? Jason? Nothing. See, I did it right away. Yes, I see. Laura and I were just at <laughs> discussing whether to call Jason Chief Luno or Jason, but... Jason's fine. Okay, Sorry. so there's no, no changes. Um, I'm going to start the meeting just by... Uh, on May 15th of this year, the board passed rules of procedure, and these are reminders that we're, most of us are familiar with, and uh, these may get read at meetings on a regular basis, but uh, just, I'm not going to go through all seven of these, just the ones that I, th I think are most pertinent. Comment by the public or members of the body must be addressed to the chair. Uh, we've all heard that many times. Once they have identified themselves and not to any individual member of the body or public. Members of the public should be acknowledged by the chair before speaking. Members of the public must introduce themselves prior to speaking. That's also familiar to most of us. If a member of the public has spoken on a topic, they may not be recognized again until others have first been given the opportunity to comment. Members of the public shall be afforded a maximum of two minutes each time they speak. So there'll be two minutes and two opportunities there. So again, that's, uh, that should be familiar to most of us. So I just wanted to get that out there. Minutes, minutes from 620. I would make a motion to accept the uh, minutes of 620.23. And do I have a second? Oh, well, I'll second. <laughs> so we have a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? No. We're all good. All those in favor of approving the minutes from June 20th, 2023? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. Minutes from 626.23. I would make the motion to accept minutes of 626.23. Do I have a second? I'll second. So a motion by Chris, a second by Laura. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of uh, approving the minutes from June 26, 2023? Aye. Aye. And that would be unanimous, Judy, again. Minutes from 629.23. I would uh, so move uh, to approve the minutes of 629.23. Thank you. I will second. second. Thank you. Any discussion for June 29th? Yes. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes from June 29th, 2023? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. So new business, approve the coin drop for the Lamoille Airy Cancer Network, August 12th. Tracy, are you going to come up? So I'm just here to ask permission. Tracy Patno, um, which I hold the third annual coin drop for the Memorial Area Cancer Network, August 12th, 9 to 1, in front of the Carriage House on Brooklyn Street. I think you already answered my question, so this is the third year? Third year, yeah. yes. Yep. And Chief Luno? Yeah, it's been an annual event. We've never had any issues, so Great. I'm, all, I'm okay with it. Great, thank you. I would entertain a motion. I would um, so sort of move to approve the coin drop for the Memorial Area, Area Cancer Network on August 12th. I will second. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? So all those in favor of approving the coin drop for the Memorial Area Cancer Network on August 12th. Aye. Aye. And that would be unanimous, Judy. Thank I would you. also like to say congratulations on the, I think, $160,000 yeah, that you it's, raised. That's it's over one hundred and sixty. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. tremendous. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Great organization. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Number two, approve the hiring of a Tech 3 for the highway garage. Were you going to introduce? Kevin's here. Today. Kevin's here. Great. Go ahead, Kevin. So we've been, uh, been looking for another position hiring another person. Uh, Tech 3, as some of you may know him, Scott Lange has shown interest and has accepted the position back as a Tech 3 for the highway department and will be starting on July 10th at a rate of pay of 2790 I believe. Okay. And just for the Zoom participants, that's Kevin Barrow speaking. I, I, I forgot to have you introduce yourself. And Kevin, Scott is a um, not only a Tech 3, something that we need because we just lost a tech three but he's also a, a past employee of ours correct yeah yes oh, wow, that's great 
So this is just um, not a new spot. This is just filling an open spot, correct? Correct. That is correct, yeah. Yeah. I would entertain a motion. I would um, move to approve um, the hiring of Scott Lange uh, at a level of Tech 3 for the highway garage um, starting on July 10th. At a rate of? 2790. 2790. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second because I can. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm would you like to second? I would love to second. You go right ahead. I need a little button. So we have a we have a motion by Chris and a second by Laura. Any discussion? I mean, it's Tom Clutier. Yeah. The considering we don't have a budget, how can we hire somebody? Can we table that until we have a, a budget and then hire that person? I mean, it's uh, summertime. We don't, uh, the town's not going to go to, so we, just be destroyed by not hiring this one thing. And it may help. It may help the budget be decreased enough so it would pass. It might be a suggestion I would hope you would consider. Just table on that until we do have a budget and then hire the fellow. I guess my, my quick response, Tom, is we've heard continually comments and concerns about the roads in town. And uh, we just lost a Tech 3 not too long ago. And um, we're replacing that individual with all that experience and coming back. So that's my, that's my quick and immediate response to that. I understand where you're coming from. Um, we clearly have a lot of work to do. We still have a vacancy in the highway department, by the way. Yes, I know. Don't this, we have this, is, this is just replacing the, the Tech 3 that resigned last month. Yeah. Didn't we agree not to fill one, and then we it did. still left one open? Is that correct? So there's technically two spots that are still open. Is that correct? After this one. After this one. Correct. And then we have another position that we're not filling. Is that correct. am I? Yeah. Kevin, do you mind just coming up to the yeah. microphone and saying just that for the people at home? So right now, with this hire, we would be fully staffed, other than the one that was not funded for the next coming fiscal okay. year. And still leaving us down one person that's out on medical leave. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kevin. Come on up. Uh, Tony Cody, Cody Hill. I was just wondering how many employees are in the town garage. I, it's gone back and forth, so I'm not, I ain't quite sure. That is going to be a question for our superintendent. I don't have that answer yeah. for you, but. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Kevin? So right now, with this hire, there'll be 11. Okay. So fully staffed would be 12, but Correct. we don't have that, no. the funding for that other vacancy. So like Tom said, with, with the budget being out there, I, I do know Stowe only has six or seven employees. Waterbury has six. I checked on that last week. I just think we had to be careful. Thank you. Come on up. Young Paris, I'd like to see an audit of what what is going on in the town in the road system. I mean, what is what are they working on? What are they fixing? Um, I don't see anything happening at our end of town. Nothing. The Randolph Road, Earl Grey Road, they pass the greater every now and then, but the asphalt is absolutely abysmal. I mean, I'm Tom, uh, Don, I'm sure when you drove to see your friend and came back into town, over by, I don't know if you know where I mean by Ward's Pond yeah. on the Randolph Road. I mean, there's three layers of pavement that are gone. We're on the fourth layer of pavement now that was probably put down 40 years ago. I'm not saying, I know the highway budget is reduced, but some of these holes just have to be fixed. Yeah. Thank you, I, I, I hear you. I'm just gonna say that we're here to approve the Tech 3. I don't wanna get too okay, deep so. into the highway department, but You've, you've made your comments loud and clear, and our superintendent's here, and um, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, so 
All those in favor of approving the hiring of Scott Lange as a Tech 3 for the highway garage at a rate of $27.90 an hour. Aye, that would be unanimous. Number three, accept the resignation of Select Board Member Travis Sabatasso. So I have a letter of resignation that I'm going to read. I think um, a lot of us are, are familiar with this happening. I just want to say, um, out of respect for Travis, I personally have spoken to him. I think maybe all of us up here at the table have spoken to him. This is, uh, this is his story to tell, so I'm not gonna get, get into the details of this. But the letter is dated June 30th, 2023. Dear Morristown Select Board and Town Administration, please let this letter serve as my formal resignation from the Town of Morristown Select Board, effective immediately. I wish you all the best as you move forward. Sincerely, Travis Sabatasso. So I would entertain a motion to accept this letter of resignation. I would um, make a motion to accept Travis's resignation from the select board with regrets, um, uh, effective today. Thank you, Chris. Second with tremendous regret. I will uh, highlight that and, uh, and agree. Um, discussion. Yeah, my name is Tom Cloutier. I'd like, to, I'd like to go a little bit and talk about Travis. The first time we met him, a bunch of us got together, was when he was deciding whether he was going to run for the select board. We spent an hour with him, and that's when I realized that this man had integrity. He had principle. He was honest. He wasn't doing it for the position of select board. He was doing it to help the people. He, he was a gentleman about it. And the way we talked about things, you knew that he cared for this town. And the only reason he was doing it, he lives, works in Essex, drive back here was because he sincerely thought that he could help this town. And if any of you have talked with him, you know that he, does, he doesn't try to convince you of what is right. He teaches you. He, dis, he, he tries to explain to you why things happen. And then not only does he listen, he hears you. He's a gentleman. And what has occurred to him to get off this board is an atrocity. It's just an atrocity. You have lost one of the nicest, kindest gentlemen that's ever been in this position. And some of you are, are responsible. And I want to read you. I want to read you a little bit of the email. I'm going to ask you to try and stick with the two minutes, but if you can be quick, go ahead. I'll be quick. This is from Travis. He says, when I responded to your email yesterday, this is to me, about reaching out to those residents, the same email I sent all you folks to reach out to people to help you with the, with the budget. He said, reaching out to those residents, Judy, our esteemed <clears throat> chairperson responded to me and directed me not to talk to you. Her exact words, and this is from her email, Travis, stop taking your marching orders from Tom. You imagine how that affected a person with integrity, who's honest, and is so, that was so far out of line, and was so far from the truth, that's what started his walking away. I got another email from you. There's going to be plenty of more emails because I haven't got all yours. Tom, I'm going to... You're going to cut me off. Well, we've, we've reached. How many more emails do you have to read? One more. One more. Okay. 
Who's keeping count of the two minutes? I, I, I was please, hoping please. I wouldn't I have to. Please, I don't think this is a good time to be go, counting go ahead, people Tom. off. Go ahead, Tom. Thank you. And this was to Judy Beckford, Don McDowell, to you, Chris, and to you, Laura. An email from Travis directed to Judy. Judy, stop directing me how to do my job. Show some leadership and get off your high horse. This is Travis, the gentle talking Travis, not me speaking, Travis, and get off your high horse. Engaging the more vocal members of our public is essential in getting a budget passed. Essential. It still is. Disregarding them, calling them things like alarmist and mercenary, calling them mercenary groups is not the way. Thank you, Tom. Is that it? I got plenty more, but I'm, I'm going to let sure it go now. Again, this I is the reason he's gone, and you saw those, you saw those emails and did nothing. So well, I just you I, can I, say all you I, want. I'm I want to say, <laughs> I just want to say again. I started this conversation. This is Travis's story to tell, and I'm going to let let him do that. I will very quickly say your description of him. I would agree with. I've had uh, plenty of opportunities to sit down and talk to Travis over the last three months, and uh, yeah, they've been they've been good conversations. Tony. Yeah. Uh, Tony Cody Cody Hill. First of all, Chris, I've known you for almost forty years. Okay, believe it or not, forty years goes by quick, don't it? Yeah. And we've had quite a friendship, and our friendship is not going to end here. Okay? This is all horse shit. Okay? Don, I've known you for probably a year and a half. Talked to you on the phone several times. I don't get nowhere, but that's okay. Ju uh, and Laura, I really don't know you, but I think uh, you're okay. Me personally, I'm a U.S. Marine Corps veteran, and I worked for the post office for 35 years, so I know I got a little bit of integrity. And to be called an evil mercenary by Judy, that's going some. Because if you look up the definition of evil mercenary, I don't appreciate it. And tonight, I am calling for Judy Bickford's resignation. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Okay, I'm going to ask the board. Um, go ahead. Bob Wartry, Randolph Road. We all in this room elected these people to the board. We've made it incredible. In the microphone, please. I'm sorry, we've they can't made hear it, you. We've made it incredibly difficult for them to do anything. I don't disagree with Tom or Tony. What I disagree with is the visceral bickering. We look like our national government here. Hatred, pointing fingers, coming up with no solutions. We have huge problems on the horizon. And we need to come together. I'm very upset with Travis's leaving. I voted for everyone on the board, but I wished he had taken the high road out. This just really causes more fodder for pointing the finger and getting nothing done. We don't have the luxury of not getting things done. We need to come together. We're better than this. We've got to be better than this. We're going to lose our community if we don't. So let's resign ourselves to help the board, to help the people we elected, instead of tearing them down. 
We're getting nowhere. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tom, in all fairness, you've had four or five already. I've got one more. I'll give you something really quick. The ones that are tearing people down. Because otherwise I'm not down abiding by my own rules. Other people on the select board doing it to other people on the select board. It's not us. You're doing it to yourselves. Thank so, you, you know, you. we'll try to keep it together, and we are. The select board has got to do your keeping it together, too, and not forcing people off like you did. Thank you, Tom. You are. Okay. David? Uh, David Ring? So far, no one's asked a simple question. It might be a simple answer. What happens if the board doesn't accept his resignation? It's on the floor right now. Well, what happens if you refuse? Um, I can say that we have, it's a technicality. We have all talked with him. Um, it's, um, it, it is certainly his choice. And as I said with Eric, I have to respect his opinion. Um, and, you know, no, I don't want to let him go. But, it, you know, a technicality, I could say no. But the reality is he, he is gone. And that's... Yeah, Laura. I mean, I think I think Laura's answered your question. And we ha we have. I've spoken to Travis twice this weekend, and um, I asked him to reconsider. Twice, I think it's he made it clear to me what his intentions were. It's a great question you're asking. I know we had that same question when Eric resigned, and uh, what. Well, you've got Judy kind of sitting on the fence right now, and that's happened since he uh, offered his resignation. And I just offered it to the board. Maybe you should just say no and let him have a second thought on the darn thing. I mean, just yeah. give him your opinion. You need him. We need him. There's, say no. There's actually there's more to the story that he is not releasing um, and that it will not go public. So there, there are some extenuating circumstances um, that we have to we need donors he's not coming back thank you david okay okay i'm going to s go ahead um evelyn throne uh marshall <laughs> um so yeah i think i think that it is his story to tell and i appreciate that people have some hard feelings about things that have gone on but I don't think it needs to all be projected onto Travis, his story. It, it's his story. He can tell it however he wants. And, and I, it does sound like a done deal. I think it illustrates to all, all of us, including in the audience, that be careful. Just be careful the way you speak. Be careful what you're standing up for or against, because it's easier to tear things down than it is to build it back up. And that is my concern, is that when you get upset about something and you go, burn it down, whatever, this has to all change. I've heard comments that everybody on the board has to leave. Do you know what? You treat people on the board like that, and no one's going to want to run. And you know, maybe we want a smaller government, but we got to <laughs> decide, is this the hill we want to die on? Is this what we want to do? Or do we want to calm ourselves a little, step back a little, and decide what we really want and think of it like in a positive way? Because if not, nobody's going to want to do this. And, and we all want smaller government. But I'll tell you what, we are not going to go out there and do all this stuff ourselves. We're not going to freelance everything. It, there has to be a functioning government. And I appreciate whatever you guys have done, and I appreciate, I, I totally hope that we can get people who want to serve on this board, and we need to think about that with every word we say. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion to accept the res <coughs> resignation of Select Board Member Travis Sabatasso. All those in favor of accepting the resignation? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. With regret. 
with regret. Thank you, Laura. Number four, appoint members to the Moa County Planning Commission Board of Directors. We, um, up until right now, had two members on that board. Uh, Steve Foster, who has moved to Stowe and is no longer eligible to represent um, Morristown on that board, and Judy Bickford. And Judy has put in a application to um, join LCPC, Lamoille County Planning Commission, for a year. So, before I get a before I get a motion, I'm assuming I will get one. Maybe I won't, but if I when when and if we do, I just want to remind the audience and people on Zoom that there is a remaining vacancy, and it would be very nice to have another member of Morristown on that board. It's a it's an important board. They they uh, are involved in planning issues all over the county, working with other towns. And uh, I, th I think it's really important for Morristown to have full representation on that board. So at this point, I would just say that uh, Judy has put in an application so <coughs> for a one-year position. I believe that Judy Alberi is going to advertise on our website to uh, for that second open position as well so that the uh, public is aware uh, in the broader community as well. And just from my own knowledge, um, this has nothing to do with her role on the select board because she is up for re-election in March. This cool. is any citizen can do this. Anybody can do this, yeah. Okay. And as I said, she's okay. been on yeah. she's been on the LCPC board uh, certainly for the last year. I don't know for how many years. Um, last year was a reappointment. So, yeah. so, so it was the year before that for sure. At least so two it's years. at least three yeah. years, right. I know when Judy came on that Morristown was not part of LCPC and we've worked hard to get back on that board and get representation and membership on that board. And when she came in as a select board member, I think she pretty quickly became a, an LCPC member. I, I, I don't remember that. I don't know that for sure, but she may have been. She, it's possible she's been on there for three or four years now. So do I have a motion? I would move to uh, appoint Judy Bickford uh, for one year to the Lamoille County Planning Commission Board of Directors. Do I have a motion by Chris? Do I have a second? I'll second. And I have a second by Laura. Do I have any discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of appointing Judy Bickford to the Lamoille County Planning Commission Board of Directors. Aye. I believe I'm gonna abstain. Abstain? Yes, please. I will vote aye, and the motion will fail. Mm -hmm. uh, just so the audience knows, even though two of us voted aye here out of three, we are a board of four, and uh, the fact that somebody is not present here doesn't matter. You still must approve motions by a majority of the members of the board, whether they're present or not. So two votes does not do it. Okay? I don't know if there's any, if there's any questions on that. We can go further with that. Um, number five, appoint Lamoille County Transportation Advisory <coughs> Committee representative. We've had a representative on the Lamoille County Transportation Advisory Committee for a couple of years now. It's my understanding that was uh, Hannah Farda. And I do have a description here because we do not have anybody right now who has stepped up to fill her seat. And again, this is another one of those just important things in our county that, uh, or important areas in our county where it's important for Morristown to have membership. If we don't have membership, we don't have a say. And if we don't have a say, then we have towns around us making decisions, in this case, about transportation. So I'll just read this and, um, would encourage anybody who might be interested. I do have a name and I have a phone number and an email address as well. But uh, LCPC, Lamoille County Planning Commission, addresses transportation issues through a volunteer committee known as the Transportation Advisory Committee, or TAC, all in an effort to constantly improve upon the transportation system of Lamoille County. And I just throw in there's lots of changes going on with the transportation system in this county right now. 
This committee is comprised of representatives appointed by each municipality in the county, representatives of various modal interests, including transit providers, bicycle, pedestrian, and trail advocates, aviators, and more act in an advisory capacity. Discussion topics include grant opportunities, debate on policy issues that affect the regional transportation system, and general information shared among the municipalities of Lamal County. Um, there is um, a way to find out who all the TAC representatives are currently from other towns. And uh, as a member, as a Morristown resident, you are welcome to uh, communicate with them. For more information, please contact Lamal County Planning Commission's Transportation Planner, uh, Robert Moore, and I have a phone number here, 802, for people on Zoom, 802-851-6347, and I'll just leave this piece of paper up here if anybody's interested, or you can email him at rob, R-O-B, at L-C-P-C-V-T dot O-R-G. So, I don't know if the board have any comments. Um, just that, um, so that folks know, there's uh, on this um, Transportation Advisory Committee, there's actually three spots. Um, one is a primary representative, and then there's two alt alternate uh, representatives as well, so uh, a maximum of three people could actually uh, be in place representing more so. Thank you. Laura? No comment at all. I hope okay. people will step up. Yeah, encourage people to step up. And Hannah Farda obviously would be a wonderful person to talk to. I don't know her personally, but She'd be a good person to talk to if you're interested. Okay, I'm going to move on to number six. Approve the paramedic preceptor agreement. Bill? Hi, good evening. Uh, Bill Mapes, EMS Chief. Uh, this is a agreement between um, Town of Morristown and our EMS agency and uh, the National Medical Training Center, which is affiliated with Anna Maria College in Massachusetts, uh, to accept uh, paramedic students from their program uh, to do field internship, uh, primarily with myself and paramedic Chris Clement. Uh, this mirrors the agreement that we currently have in effect with Vermont Technical College for their paramedic students, uh, their certificate of insurance, uh, and their uh, uh, approval from uh, the Commission on Health Education Programs is in your packet. Correct. Um, uh, this is a benefit for us. It's a benefit for the students because uh, it allows them to come in and see our operation. And, and frankly, we've had a, uh, one of our part-time employees, one of our part-time paramedics, was a student in the VTC program who then came to work for us upon graduation. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a, it's a two-way street. Um, so I would ask your approval of uh, this preceptor contract and uh, I'll let you decide if uh, either Jason should sign it as uh, interim town administrator or if I should be authorized to sign it as EMS chief. It makes no difference to me. Yeah, that was a question I had because it wasn't clear who was going to sign it. Yeah, it would be either. Uh, the, the previous agreement with uh, Vermont Technical College was signed by the then town administrator, which was Dan Lindley. Okay. Okay. It also benefits us, uh, and just let me get this out there, uh, we also have one of our employees who's in this program. Uh, so uh, Lori Martin will be able to do her ride time as a third person with us locally. Yeah. So. It sounds to me like there's no downside to there this. There is no downside. It doesn't cost us anything, and it, uh, uh, it's done on our regular on-duty shifts. And, oh, uh, yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no real downside. Yeah. In your profession, there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with training, is there? No, sir. Yeah. <laughs> No, sir. Not at all. Okay. And then some, and more, and more. <laughs> and more, and more. Right. Thank you. Thank um, you, Bill. Any, any comments? <laughs> no. I was going to make a motion, but I'm waiting for you. <laughs> okay, I would just, your motion should be, should include who's going to sign this? Yes. Great. Go ahead. Um, I make a motion to approve the field practical agreement and um, <coughs> with either, um, uh, chief, either one of the chiefs for signing, <laughs> and or was that clear enough, or do you want an actual name? Do you need to so you pick, designate pick one? one? Person. Yeah, one person. Okay, then I would say um, uh, Chief Bill Nyes. Then, if that's Bill names, Bill names you can. I'm sorry, you can um, sign. Correct. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 
what's going on. Is that clear? Do I need to re-say that? No, I think that's good. So we have a okay. motion to accept the field practicum agreement as um, outlined by Bill Mapes, our EMS chief, and um, that Bill would be authorized to sign the agreement on for the town of Morristown. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any other discussion? So all those in favor of approving the paramedic preceptor agreement uh, and having Bill Mapes, the signator, say aye. Aye. That would be unanimous, Judy. Old business. There is none. Approve the warrants. I would make a motion to approve the warrants. Thank I you. will second that. Thank you, Chris. So we have a motion and a second to approve the warrants. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, Aye that would be unanimous as well. Department head reports. I'm not expecting any, but. I think Trisha's online and she might be speaking. Okay. Trisha, can you hear us? Do you have something, something to report? Um, as most of you know, 4th of July is tomorrow. We will be having the parade at 11 a.m. and it will uh go on through the town till about 12 30 the fire department is open they will be having a hot dog and hamburg event outside the vfw will also be having chicken barbecue united church will be having strawberry shortcakes and the library will also be having um the book sale the night events will begin at 6 30 at oxbow park the fireworks will go off like about nine o'clock there's a, a lot coming up in our community. I want to remind everyone that on July 15th, the governor will be at Oxbow Park from one to two. I would encourage you all to be involved in this event. It's a very highly publicized event and select board members. I would love it if you would reach out to me, if you would like to be there, we would like to acknowledge that you are here as part of our community. Um, I also would like to just say a couple words about the discussion that you had about LCPC, Lamoille County Planning Commission. I was on that board for about five years um, until we sort of parted ways. When you were talking about TAC and about Judy being on the board, I had heard very clearly that Judy is was a very good representative from the town of Morristown on the LCPC board as a as a member of the board the TAC committee don when you were discussing it TAC, if you don't have a representative on the TAC committee when they're talking about the state is talking about road work and projects that they're going to do without having someone from the town on that committee we do not move up the ranks as to what the town of morristown needs so it is imperative that we get someone that will be on that TAC committee it's a it's a very interesting committee to be honest with you it's uh you you learn about so many things you would never know about and about what projects are happening in lamoille county it keeps you connected it's um it's just a, a really very very interesting committee but you're also doing a great service for the town of morristown if you sit on that board. so i just wanted to reach back out as i was listening to the conversation i thought i should say a little bit more about that that LCPC connection with the town of Morristown. And like I said, Judy Bickford, I had heard she's a great representative for the town of Morristown. I know, Lori, you didn't vote for her, but I, I would ask you to please consider it that she she is really, really good for us as a community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tr thank you Tricia. Um, and thank you for all your efforts for the 4th of July. We're all looking forward to it tomorrow. In terms of, uh, I know when we were talking about the LCPC vacancies, Chris had uh, asked uh, Judy if we were advertising for that vacancy, and we are. And I would just add to that, we are advertising for the TAC vacancy as well. OK, great. So again, anybody who's interested, we do need some, uh, we do need some membership there. Any other department head reports? 
So I have one thing for the police department. So we have an intern, which is something new to the police department. Uh, he's a student at UVM. He'll be a senior this coming year. He'll be with us uh, throughout the first week of August. And it's something that we're trying to just think outside the box with recruitment. It's, we're struggling. Law enforcement in general is struggling in recruitment. So this is uh, some we're thinking outside the box and hopefully it'll pan out in the long term. So he may be at a select board meeting at one point. Great. Great. Good. Good. We're doing better than most, though, we with are. recruitment. We are. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Um, any other department heads? Okay. Town administrator's report. I just want to welcome Jason. I mean, everyone's seen him by now, but Jason, Chief Luno, has agreed to be the interim to the interim town <laughs> administrator here for at least a few weeks and uh, I know I, I want everyone to appreciate the fact that we are very much taxing his time and asking him to come in here for a couple of hours every day and meet with uh, meet with department heads and just make sure things are moving along and help out as help out as best as he can and uh, thank you very much for doing that Jason thanks I just had one thing with that was Kind of echo what Trish said uh, with July 4th. She has put a, a lot of work into July 4th. It's something that she plans almost three months prior to the July 4th. And as well, tomorrow, the entire police department, except for the folks that work night shift, will be out working, uh, closing the streets down. Uh, Judy and Anna will be on Herald Street uh, lining up the parade. And Eric is coming back again to announce the parade right out here. So right. there's a lot of effort that goes in amongst the town employees tomorrow. I was thinking of that today when I walked in the building. I was wondering who was going to be there. Yeah. yeah. So Eric did a great job. Last hopefully year. the weather cooperates. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, any other department head reports? This is a new item on our agenda, and I will say I, I welcome it. I think it's great. And just so the community knows, we're not expecting our department heads to report at every meeting, but they will when something comes up that the public needs to know. T town administrator's report. That's it. I was, okay, yeah, that was I was referencing with July 4th. So okay. I don't have anything else. Did you want to talk about an emergency? I think next next meeting we will. Okay. I, I spoke with Denny and we're trying to get a plan together. So okay. we'll probably have something on the agenda next month. Okay. Thank you. Select board comments. I would like to go last, please. Chris. Yeah, um, Jason, uh, a couple weeks ago, um, we had quite a conversation about uh, vandalism down the Oxbow Park at uh, restrooms. And I know that Tricia wanted some time to think this thing through, and it's been a couple of weeks, and it's cost the municipality thousands of dollars in repair. Um, do you have any kind of update in terms of where we stand, and has there been additional vandalism um, has there been some controls put into place to try to mitigate that so i can answer the question on additional vandalisms uh, it's been pretty quiet down there in the last couple of weeks so to my knowledge there's been no vandalisms we've been trying to put more patrols down there at night when we can uh, just to make sure everybody's on their best behavior as far as the practices i don't know if trish wants to comment on that Go ahead, Trish. Yeah, okay. I was sort of debating about this one just because we had all talked about this a little bit. And like Jason said, them putting extra patrols on, we asking community garden members to keep an eye out for us. You know, community makes community. No matter how we all look at this whole picture, like these these are the people that are going to make sure that our bathrooms are safe. It's the people that are there. And this is how we have built Oxbow Park from the beginning, like since I started there. And so I just sort of wanted to ride it out a little bit, Chris, to see like how our community gardens people responded back, how Jason responded back. And it's great to hear Jason, like we have not had any problems lately because it's, it's you know, it's, it's how it's gonna work its problems out. The more people you bring to the park, the safer our park is gonna be. Well, I mean, we all know this about any situation in any location that we have different things. And, you know, I had some ideas from another uh, 
community member about our bathrooms. We had already hit all those targets on it. So um, that's what I would say is that we are just going to sort of ride it for a while and see what what happens because I think we have we have great bathrooms and our community can do this. Thank Judy, you. Are you still monitoring the app? Mm -hmm. um, as there's some issues that I believe we need to address with that. Yes. Okay. Yep. We'll talk to you about that. There's some. Uh, Anything else, Chris? No, no we appreciate it. Just yeah, something. Yeah. Do you want me to go first? Before yes, please. You? So, um, just a couple things. Last week we had the ribbon cutting at the Hutchins Street apartments. Um, they should start getting occupied, is my understanding, in the next couple of weeks. I was well attended. A lot of people were there. It was, it was good, good to see that. And my only other thing was I. I uh, this whole uh, discussion of town administrator versus town manager. I just want to be clear, and I'm not speaking for the board, I'm speaking for Don McDowell, that uh, I, I am very interested in us looking forward at a town manager for this town down the road. That's not going to happen, I know, anytime soon. Uh, we, got, we got some other hurdles, but I did get an email um, from an individual, a town resident, along those lines, and I, I just want to say that it hasn't hasn't gone unnoticed at all. It is something I personally think we need to think about. You've heard me say many times, Morristown is a large town. It is not a small town. It's a complex town. There's a lot of issues. Um, I think Jason would agree that you know this week they find out just how complicated it can be and. Certainly, uh, the select board members, now that Eric's not here, are much busier than, than they were. So I, I just want to throw that out there. Very interested in moving forward in this way. And it's not, you know, it's, it, it, having a town manager here would uh, take issues off our plate and put them on that person's plate and hopefully move this town forward in a much more coordinated uh, way. Tony, I'll... Let's just finish select board concerns and. I just want to answer your question. I got a question for you. You're going to answer my question or give me a question? I'm going to give you a question. You're going to give me a question? Can, can I wait till. Remain, can this board remain and, and three select people with a town manager? Uh, say that again? Can Why do we need five board members on the select board if we have a town manager? That's a good question going forward, yeah. Laura? Um, I, no. I, mean, I don't have an answer right now. I can address that, but I won't. Um, this is my personal opinion. Um, having come on at the same time as Travis, um, I have since coming onto this board, there has been um, an interest in presenting a united front. Um, and I have to say that certainly I have tried to do that. Um, there are some things I want to point out. Um, first of all, that under the rules of procedure, it says no single member uh, of the body shall have the authority to represent or act on behalf of the body unless by majority vote the body has delegated such authority for a specific matter at a duly noticed meeting and some delegation is recorded in the meeting minutes. I would like everybody to keep that in mind when you see front page forums. I personally have asked people to put a disclaimer stating when they are speaking for themselves and when they are not. Um, oftentimes we are in agreement as to who will speak, but just keep that in mind. Um, for me, this, this um, is not the current um, procedure and appears to be the modus operandi. I prefer not to go into details, but I have discovered that there have been specific intent uh, to exclude me from certain communications by one select board member. Excluding a select board member in any commu communications must stop. Losing Travis is a tremendous loss for this town. And as a new member, I am in complete agreement with his assessment of the situation and have been subject to the same behavior. 
I have and will continue to address the lack of democratic process and the disrespect of the residents that emanates at times from this board. It anger me, angers me the refusal to acknowledge the majority vote and dismissal of voters as, and I quote, anti-budget group who, and I quote again, use a campaign of fear mongering and misinformation to defeat it. I have been accused of a I quote, collaboration between a select board member and this anti-budget group. From the attorney at the VCLT states, your role as an elected official is political, so it's perfectly appropriate to have correspondence with the public outside of meetings. It involve, um, if it involves a quorum of members, which is three, though it will trigger a meeting and the open meeting law will apply but doing so alone is fine, so long as you aren't representing your opinion as the board's opinion, unless that case or uh, they've delegated you or another member of that authority. I would encourage the naysayers to take a serious look in the mirror and ask themselves, who is really spreading misinformation and gossip? It is a sad day for Morristown to lose such a young vibrant human being who deeply cares for this community and is such a valuable resource. I am disheartened. My first reaction was to leave also. But after the meeting, I cannot walk away and or will I be run out of town um, by taxes. I, I have a very special thank you to Travis and I am sorry for how you have been treated. Thank you, Laura. Community comments. <laughs> you, you have really no idea, and, and I'm afraid you folks don't either right now, but you will, how upset this whole thing with Travis has made. And I agree with you 100% that it's awful that we have to keep bringing this stuff up. This is a nice doing that. I, if you don't know me, I want you all to know one thing right now. If I see an injustice or a travesty or something wrong that I believe is wrong that will hurt this town, I will not be quiet and take the high road. You will hear me complain. And that's what I'm doing now. I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with this budget. Travis got in trouble because he met outside people. To, that Travis listens and, he, and listens to these people. We had some really good suggestions for you folks, and you tossed them in the trash bag, and then you tra trash Travis in the trash bag. I am totally beyond myself. And you've got to know that I'm not alone. I'm not alone. There's a lot of people that have seen what's going on here. And we should like to be quiet. We like to do this all together. And we tried, and look what happened. You've got a long way to go. We want this budget to pass so we can get back to being normal. But I'm not gonna be quiet just to do that. I hope you do your work. Well, two, Thank you, Tom. Two, two comments, Tom. Um, you inferred in your statement that this board uh, disparaged Travis. No, I did not. I, what I said, what I said was, you got the emails and did nothing, and so, stood by. I'm just going to say, I'd rather not get into a back and forth at this point. I'd really like to just give the community a chance to express its concerns. I'll just say it's a little concerning to sit here and have them spoken about this board and the process that I find objectionable and true. Uh, I don't disagree. Tony. Tony Cody, Cody Hill. So this question is for Kevin Barrows. Uh, at this point, you I'm looking at you. I'm not looking at him. You can address the question okay. to Don McDowell. This question is for Don McDowell. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yep. I called the town. I called the town. Uh, office there at last Thursday talked to Derek Small I think his name is correct yeah looking for a grader on Cody Hill 
sometimes I almost think the town has sold the graders. The graders need to be out. I know there's no gravel. I know there's no material. There's potholes this big. Come on. You want to raise my taxes $1,400? We want a little bit of service. The roads are bad. Come on. I asked you once, Chris. You got a classic car, right? You still got that? I don't, but I understand what you're saying. Okay. I like to get my classic cars off the hill. I can't do that. I'm not asking for much. Greater every other week, maybe every third week. Haven't seen a greater up there for over a month. Okay, you're shaking your head. I'd like to see a greater, that's all. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Go ahead, Bob. Bob Borkery, uh, Randolph Road. Um, I was initially opposed to most of the budget moves. Um, my taxes are going to go up considerably. Um, but as I began to think about it in depth and in detail, instead of taking a knee-jerk reaction, I began to realize that the town runs the way the rest of us run. We go to the grocery store, we have to pay more money. We go to the gas pump, we fill up, it costs more money. The town is in the same situation. They have to buy gas, they have to buy heat, they have to pay lights, they have to pay salaries. They have to do all of this stuff. And I think most of all, I began to realize the importance of either a town administrator or a town manager with considerable experience. And that's going to require something more than $80,000 a year. We can be penny wise and pound foolish and cut the bed budget to bare bones and end up with somebody in a position that is not going to do what we need done in this town. Bob, microphone please. We, we need you. to have someone who has experience, knowledge to guide us through the next five years. If we don't have that, we've lost this town. Five years is, if five years goes by and we don't make the changes that we need to make in this town, we're done. Morrisville will never be what you want it to be again. That is a guarantee. And so we're kind of stuck right now. You inherited a lot of problems that you're trying to sort through. There are no easy answers. I understand that. I, I think probably everybody in this room understands it. And I don't know where you cut next. I, I don't know what the answer is. What I do know is that if we can think beyond this year and get this budget passed and put into place some things that will help us in coming years so that we don't have yep. these eight, nine, ten percent budget increases. If we could think about the board possibly um, possibly implementing a cap on future budgets. That's one thing we could do. Yep. But to slice the budget to a point where we simply can't go forward as a as a thriving community, I think is a huge mistake. And Thank I've you. come around to change my mind on the budget. I just wanted to- Thank you, Bob. Mm -hmm. Town manager from Philadelphia. You're gonna need to, I'm gonna give everyone a chance to speak once. First, is there anybody else in the audience? Ed. Come on up, Ed. And then, is that Kathy up there? Yeah. Kathy, you'll be next. I think the discussion of having a town manager is a great idea. I think it's far more complex. Uh, a lot of people are looking at it 
as the easy way out, we'll hire somebody with all the skills. I have seen, neither seen nor heard, one single word out of anyone speaking at this meeting that would give me confidence that we have anyone available to us so far that would know how to tell a good one from a bad one. Grading lumber is a skill. <laughs> it takes years and a lot of training. This level of personnel um, skill is something you really have to have gone to school for. There's a set of protocols. What are the questions you're going to ask? Okay. If, if we could avail ourselves of that level of expertise, I say let's do it, but in any case, let's discuss it. Um, my preference in this town is as close to a direct democracy as we could get. Uh, uh, we're failing to discuss the great steps we've taken so far. Going to Australian ballot, look at the size of the votes that have changed since the first of this year. Um, look at the level of participation and all the advertisement to bring people into the discussion. That's changed. OK, so this stuff doesn't change overnight. <clears throat> it's a long way from having changed far enough to suit me. But what I'd like to see is five select people <laughs> any one of whom could sit down and write a budget for a million dollar corporation. Time. I would, yes. I would like, I would like to see voters that are educated and involved enough to do that. Failing that, let's get a town manager. <laughs> but you then have to trust them. If you're aware, the town of Norwich has had five managers in 10 years because they've had one clunker after another and have had to fire them. So it's not a panacea for the problems we're having. First, you've got to get yourself straightened you. out, okay? Thank you, Ed. Kathy on Zoom. <clears throat> um, I would like to say thank you to Laura for having integrity. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I second of all would like to say um, I second Tony's comment uh, that we call for Judy Bickford's resignation. She has a number of times rolled her eyes at people that are speaking to her, laughed in her face, in our face. The last one is Julia Companion week ago. She's a lawyer. She's rolling her eyes to her. So that's all I'm going to say right now. I'm waiting for other things to come out. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Are there are any other comments under community comments? Come on up and introduce yourself. Jamie Jarrett, uh, in reference to the budget and to uh, town manager position, I don't think there's anybody in this room that would be opposed to having town manager with a salary that is far exceeding what is currently budgeted. What I do challenge all the department heads, though, is to <coughs> prepare their budgets as if this was their own business. Because right now, anybody can go out and ask for this, that, and everything else. And then re going back to two months ago, I posed a question. And the question was, each department, the, the budgeted dollars that they were asking for was in excess of a half a million dollars on top of over a half a million dollars the previous year. Nobody can answer why we had a million dollars, over a million dollars in each budget, each department, rise the way it has. And I don't think we've seen the benefits of that money. Thanks. Thank you, Jamie. Come on up. 
Jerry Throne, Morrisville. Uh, I wasn't really uh, thinking we were going to have a budget discussion tonight, but uh, so I didn't bring any of my documents. Uh, but I'm hoping that there will be an opportunity for us to have a budget discussion where we can drill down and uh, you know present you with uh, facts. That's all I'm having to say. Yeah, we're planning one for Thursday night. Thank you. This Thank Thursday. This Thursday, yes. Any other comments? I'll wait till Thursday. <laughs> I'm looking forward. Okay, other business? I would then entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a second. I would so move. I have a motion from Chris and a second from Laura. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Everyone, happy 4th. Oh, have, have a happy, safe day. Time Thursday. 5.30.